Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Michelle Morius and I make art tutorials that are fun, easy, and accessible for everyone. Today we're going to be doing these Reese's Peanut Butter Cups uh, drenched in chocolate in Polychromos color pencils. Before we get into the video, it would really mean a lot to me if you would subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment below, I subscribed. I'll be sure to get back to each and every one of you and while you're at it, smash that like button. So it's always important to start with an accurate sketch and I've done that in a uh, light brown color pencil. Uh, I don't want to see my graphite marks so I did use the color pencil because I figured it would blend in with the rest of the drawing and I don't have to worry about those graphite marks showing up. So I do spend a little bit of time sharpening all my pencils before I get started. And the reason for this is you always want to use a sharp color pencil to control your pressure. Uh, if you start breaking your points, you know you're pressing too hard on the paper, you'll ruin the tooth of the paper and you won't be able to put or blend any other colors on top of it. So you want to use light, light layers with sharp color pencils. The sharp pencil will help with your accuracy as well as to control your pressure. If you're finding that you're trying to put down too much color uh, right off the bat, then hold your pencil back a little farther on the barrel. This will help you control the pressure and use light coats. So I always start by going in and since we have a really good sketch, now I'm going in with my colors and I'm just kind of color mapping. So I'm going in with my dark tones and then I'll start going in with the chocolate colors. Um, you want to have a nice light coat down of color pencil so that all the other colors that you're putting on top will blend nice and easy uh, with the base layers. This will also be your roadmap for the rest of the drawing and this way you won't get lost as you're trying to go along and put in all those details. So we're going into the top little uh, Reese's cup on the top and you're gonna see me put several shades of brown down. So I'm just trying to represent what's going on in my reference image and I'm still mapping in at this stage. So there's gonna be several coats of different colors of brown to make up that little chocolate. So just um, don't be afraid to use your eraser if you have to at this stage. If you do something wrong or you go a little askew, um, that color pencil should come up fairly easily, especially with an er electric eraser, or you can use a Tombow Mono Zero eraser or any kind of stick eraser. Um, when you start to blend, it's gonna be harder to pull that color up, um, but in the beginning stages, you can pull that up, and like I said, with the electric eraser, everything comes up pretty smoothly. So I'm just trying to get my decent base coat down, and you know, pop in where um, those highlights, I like to keep those kind of pure from the beginning because it's really hard to put white color pencil over a darker color and have it really show up. So you wanna keep those whitest, brightest highlights um, kind of pure from the beginning and you won't have to worry in the end to pop those. Um, and we can go back in with a jelly roll pen or a white correction pen um, to pop those in the end, but I do like to keep them pure from the beginning. So you don't wanna rush a color pencil drawing. This actual drawing took me two hours and 54 minutes to finish. Um, so it's a slow process. You just have to keep building up your layers very slowly and lightly, and you'll have a really good result in the end. So just know that it's gonna take you some time and don't rush it. And if you have to take a break, you take a break and put some fresh eyes back on it when you get back to it. So just go in with light layers and just keep building up and building up. And the most important part is that you get your values correct. 
So even if your color isn't exactly the same as your reference image, as long as your values are in the right um, value range, you'll have a nice realistic finished drawing. So you can go in with lighter browns or different color browns if you don't quite have the perfect one in your set and it's not gonna matter. But make sure your darks are dark enough and your highlights are there and your midtones are all there. So you wanna use the full range of value. So it might be tempting to really try to push all those darks in kind of right away. And like I said, with the layering process, you wanna layer and you wanna layer different colors. So in that chocolate, there's some reds, there's gonna be some browns, all different shades of brown. And then in your dark, dark, dark areas, you can use a little bit of like Payne's gray or add a little bit of red in there um, to darken that up. But you wanna do it slowly. So you can see me putting in um, many, many shades in there and we're just gonna keep layering and layering until we get it as dark as we need it to be. But you're gonna struggle in the beginning with it, trying to get it dark enough. But you wanna go slowly and it'll get there there, but you have to give it the time and the layers in order to make it look um, realistic. My reference image today is from unsplash.com, which is a free reference image website with um, high quality photos that you can use royalty free and um, not have any copyright strikes with your um, photos. So if you want to draw along with me, hop on over there, grab the photo, and you can use the grid method or any other method to transfer your picture onto your drawing page and draw right along with me. Um, the nice part about video is you can pause or you can speed up or you can back up and you can kind of catch up with me as you go along. If you guys would like to see other projects like this or you have a specific medium or subject matter you'd like me to go over, please leave it in the comments below and I will certainly get back to you. I love hearing from you guys and I love your feedback, so keep it coming. So we have a pretty good base layer down um, throughout this piece now. I'm going in still with the electric eraser. I'm just pulling out a few little details. In that uh, peanut butter part of that cup, it's kind of like fluffy and has kind of um, like a air hole fluffy texture. And you can pick some of that out with the eraser um, and just keep going along. So it's just all about the layering and you just have to keep building up slowly. So I'm really liking the way that that top little chocolate is coming out. And we're gonna start adding in more and more details as we go now. So we're darkening up our darks and just keep adding in details little by little. So just enrich the chocolate and look for your shadows and just keep going. And it's really important to finish your drawings. I know sometimes even I get frustrated with a drawing and I'll put it aside and um, I really have to force myself sometimes to go back at it and finish it. But it's really important to finish your drawings. I think you really learn from your mistakes and you learn where you went wrong. And it's actually a learning process to try to fix those mistakes sometimes too. So just keep at it and, and finish your drawings and, and let it go to the end. And, and then you can put it aside Then it might not be your favorite in the end, but at least you tried, you'll learn something from it and that's the most important part. Um, if you wanna get better at drawing, you need to draw every day. Have a little sketchbook and doodle, draw, do whatever you need to do. It's helpful sometimes to do the same subject over and over again and you'll get better at it and you'll find that you'll be a pro at it by the time you're done. So I'm using a Strathmore 400 Bristol paper, which is a pretty smooth paper. 
all the more reason why you need to build up slowly in light light layers because there's not a heavy tooth to this paper you need to really build up slowly so you can use um, pastel matte which has a really heavy tooth and you'll find that the color um, the concentration of color goes on so much easier on a really heavy tooth paper I prefer a smoother paper um, but it does take a little getting used to if you are used to using a watercolor paper that has a tooth or the pastel mat. Um, I did the Bluebird um, drawing on pastel mat and you can um, click the link above and see that video and that's a really heavy tooth paper where um, the colors really build up a lot quicker and, and more vibrant um, from the beginning but I prefer with the detailed work for a nice smooth paper but you do have to use really light layers and I can't stress that enough so just you know try different things out and see what works best for you and every time you change a medium or a paper you'll get a different result so um, I also have tutorials where I have mixed medium so you can do a Copic marker under layer or a watercolor um, base layer and then go over with the color pencils and you'll get a totally different effect but don't be afraid to try different things so I did go in and I popped a couple of highlights with my jelly roll pen and we're gonna glaze over some of those with a little bit more color pencil um, to soften some of those but I just felt like I needed to uh, give myself a little bit of a better representation of where those highlights are so just um, we're gonna we'll probably go back in after this and pop those again but um, feel free to put them in and then you kind of glaze over them and make them less white make some of them brighter make some of them less bright um, but we're getting into um, really our details at this point so now you can increase the pressure on your pencil just a little bit and smush those colors together and we're not really burnishing we're not putting like heavy heavy pressure on but you can increase the pressure a little bit which will um, just blend those colors nicely together and you can see we're coming up with a really um, realistic nice shiny effect on these chocolates so I'm going in with kind of like a gray tone here and it's lighter than the base layer that I put down but it, it's a good way to kind of blend all those tones together so you can use white you can use gray um, gray is a good color to use if you want to desaturate a color what I mean by desaturate is just tone it down keep the same color basically but you're just toning it down a little bit so um, feel free to go in and use a, a lighter color to smush the darker colors together and now it's all about the details so we're just going to go in and we're going to enrich everything and just put in our good details i'm going in with the electric eraser popping a couple more highlights and then i'll go back and i'll add more brown in to those areas so you could see i was still able to pull up with that eraser pull up some of that color if you get the wrong tone or the wrong value in an area don't be afraid to pull that up now if you're using oms odorless mineral spirits um, that is a um, way to blend your color pencils but I'm not using that in this drawing, but if you are, you will not be able to erase that once you've put that down. And if you are using the OMS, um, just make sure you let it dry before you go back in on top with some more layers of color pencil. So now it's all about refining everything. Now's the time to clean up your lines, um, pick out your highlights, darken up your shadows and just kind of clean everything up. So you wanna go give it a good once over, double check on your reference image and see what you need to change, if you need to change anything. And just kind of give it a good clean up and a good once over and um, we're gonna be good to go. 
So just keep going and just make sure that you're refining everything. If you have stray pencil lines, now's the time to clean all that up. Use your eraser, get rid of any of your uh, little crumbs of colored pencil that might have fallen out or smudges or anything of that nature. Um, I know that from dragging your hand around sometimes, you get some of those um, colored pencil to smudge and just use your kneaded eraser to pick that up. So just go in with your final details and we'll be good to go. I'm gonna add a little final shadow in underneath that little Reese's cup that's um, upside down there. And basically I just wanna ground the drawing so it's not floating in midair. We'll put a little bit of shadow down and um, make it look a little bit more realistic, like it has a purpose that it's sitting on a table. So you can go in and you can do this stage with colored pencil or you can do it with graphite. A lot of times I like to use graphite because it's a little bit of a softer shadow, but um, feel free to use colored pencil or graphite or whatever you like. And just popping those final highlights with a jelly roll pen. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment, smash the like button, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. I wanna thank you so much for joining me today, and happy art.